On this week's show, we explore the world of 2000 AD, Batman Hush, and what you read. It's Previews World Weekly, and it's happening right now. What's up, Previews World? It's Wednesday, it's New Comic Book Day, which means it's time for Previews World Weekly. I am one of your hosts, Troy Jeffrey Allen. And I'm Thea, and as usual, we're here every week to remind you guys to stop at a comic shop and get involved in what's happening in the world of comics. We'd also like to remind you that if you're enjoying the show and you want to keep the nerd news coming, be sure to give us a like and subscribe. Hey, Thea. Are video games the cause of society's woes? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Totally not. Totally no, not. there have okay. been decades of research on this. this Come is on, very guys. True. But I must say that this has prompted a bunch of really great memes. Uh -huh. My favorite of which is the original photo of everybody that made Pong standing right. next to the cabinet saying, <laughs> Violence is introduced to humanity right, in 1961. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> God, like, yeah, like Galaga and Pong, like, it totally. goes way back, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's funny. I, I was kind of, I, when these conversations happen, I'm like, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how advanced geek culture goes or what geek chic does or yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's still going to be pick on the nerds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they're still the easy target, yeah. right? Yeah. So, anyway, I just wanted to show a little solidarity to the, <laughs> the other side of geekdom, mm -hmm. you know, so that's all that was. My side. But, <laughs> it's your side. It is your side. That's why I asked. Um, but, Anime is here, and she's going to show us at what's at the comic shops, and then when we come back, we'll show you some of our picks and some of the stuff you should pick up this week. Check it out. What's up, Previews World? Mia here, and I'm going to give you a look at some of the new titles in stores this week. Here's what's at Comic Shops for the week of August 14th. Is that it? No way. Your comic shop has something for every type of customer. So stop at a comic shop today, and I'll see you back here next week. Thanks, Mia. And of course, that's a little bit of what's available right now. If you want to see a list that's the full rundown of what you can get at your shop this week, head on over to previewsworld.com slash new releases. What are you reading? Uh, this is in the middle of an arc. Well, it's like the second part of an arc, mm -hmm. but like I just kind of caught wind of this, and I was like, I, I want to actually know more about this. Hit Girl number seven. Ooh. So Mark Miller, he's been doing this thing where like he's just inviting other writers to write Hit Girl. Cool. And he had Kevin Smith. He did. He had uh, Stephen Niles, who did Thirty Days a Night, and a couple other people. Um, but this one is written by uh, Daniel Way, who wrote the Deadpool video game. He wrote a bunch of other stuff, yeah. but his. I, I would argue that his biggest claim to fame is the Deadpool video game. Nice. Really solid writer, good action writer. On top of that, it's got artwork by Gor uh, Goran Por Parlov, who, look, I'm probably butchering his name. <laughs> I love his artwork. He did Punisher Barracuda and a bunch of other stuff. Ooh. He usually does stuff with uh, Garth Ennis. So, like, yeah, it's, it just seems fun. And, like, I love the tagline here, which is, Mindy's out to improve her killing. Oh. And her Cantonese. Huh? Because the story takes place in China. I so. like that. Yeah, just a, a fun <laughs> little, like, you know, like, I think this is like a three or four part story uh -huh. and, like, pretty punchy. And, like, yeah, check it out. It's cool. Yeah. If you like a uh, kick ass and hit girl and all this stuff. Absolutely. What about you? What are you looking forward to this I week? I am reading Gagor right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I love it. And we're on to issue number four <laughs> this week. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, Ken Gehring has killed it with everything. He's the writer and the artist okay. for this. And beautiful character design, all the artwork is gorgeous, and the story is great, and I am really just loving it. Nice, nice. I'm suddenly in a kick of sort of like D&D-esque parties going on adventures kind of uh, stories okay. right uh -huh. now, and this uh -huh. sort of fits in that category. Okay. Yeah, the, also the, uh, the setting, like the, the place that this takes place is really cool. It's a, like a giant circle of floating islands. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. That's actually, yeah, I remember you mentioned that before. It's yeah. So cool. It's a neat concept. Yeah. So yeah. pick it up, guys. It is super fun. Super, Very colorful, fun. too. Like, it yes. jumps off at the shelf actually Absolutely. when you see it. So that's mm -hmm. actually pretty awesome. Yep. Um, another one I'm looking forward to this week is uh, Conan the Barbarian Exodus. It's a one shot. Mm -hmm. um, it's cool because it's a silent issue. For the most part, it's a silent mm -hmm. issue. And, like, the reason, I think one of the reasons that is, is because it's drawn by Isad. 
Asad Ribic. Well, if you're American, you probably say Ribic. I'm sure it's Ribic. But um, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's like it's basically a year one story with Conan. And like I said, it's a silent issue. It's a one shot. It's nice, like a little one and done. Um, and it's just, and also like Ribic's like artwork is just great. It's got this sort of. Uh, watercolor vibe to it that's like fully painted like cool. yeah it's actually really really neat so Very nice. yeah definitely check out Conan the Barbarian uh, Exodus just one shot only Absolutely. gotta read pick it up once and read it's it true. it's fun there you go so um, what else are we looking forward to this week I have also been reading Reaver okay and uh -huh. we only have this is only the second issue okay uh -huh. but the first one pulled me in enough that I'm like really excited to pick up more of them uh -huh. and again a sort of D&D-esque party going on a, an adventure kind of thing. It's a bunch of uh, folks that are basically sent on kind of a suicide mission in order to redeem themselves. Okay. And they're all different characters from different races and different places in the world that this takes place in. And it's solid character design again. The artwork is really beautiful. And I'm uh, again, just a book that I'm really enjoying. Okay. I, you know, tabletop's big right now. Yeah. So it's like, it's not surprising that we're seeing all these little D&D pox between Stranger Things. I know you were really big on Die. Yes. And uh, a couple other things. Mm -hmm. So definitely cool stuff to check out. Speaking of cool stuff to check out, um, here's a few other things that you probably should pick up. Uh, event Leviathan is out uh, this mm -hmm. week. This is DC's big event. Um, it's interesting because it's Batman, Green Arrow, Lois Lane, Plastic Man, Question, and the Martian Manhunter. Uh -huh. And the way that they're, uh, uh, they're not a super team really, but like the way that they're describing them is like pretty much DC's best detectives, which I think is kind of cool. I actually really enjoy that. Like that. And as someone who's reading Silencer, like, you know, nonstop, uh, like this kind of ties into a larger story arc about Leviathan which is like this uh, this secret society of assassins mm -hmm. who are like trying to take over basically the DC universe. Um, it has connections to Talia al Ghul and Ra's al Ghul. So yeah, it's just nice connective tissue and uh, this is a big event book and also I think it plays into the year of the villain thing because cool. the big secret is who is the head of Leviathan. Oh. So we're en route to finding that out right now. So Conspiracy. Yeah. Also Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev, so there you go. Uh, what else should people look forward to? So this may have been one that people should just generally pick up, but it's also definitely one of my picks. Mm -hmm. I have been very excited about oh, this yeah. book, uh -huh. and here we are. It's here once and future number one is finally out. Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about this before on the show, mm -hmm. and super cool story concept yeah. and historical tie-ins, which I think is right, one of my yeah, favorite yeah, things yeah. as well. Like you get some of the like real life lore tied into a comic book story. Right. And I'm absolutely here for it. So it's uh, of course from my favorite, Kieran Gillen. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> this is like increasingly I your love favorite. his stuff. <laughs> 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 so it's got a little like uh, it's it's British history mm -hmm. and tied in with um, magic and myth and this right, this old yeah. monster hunter uh, drags her grandson into a plot with her where they have to sort of revive the old family business mm -hmm. and it's yeah. No, I love that. It's like, yeah. time. It's here. Pick it up. Pick Read it. it up. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like you said. It's Karen Gillan. It's Dan Mora who did uh, Santa, uh, did Klaus with Grant Morrison. Mm -hmm. The art looks just great. Yes. Like it just it's expressive and it's vibrant and mm -hmm. it just they, like the characters are, look like they're moving off the page. It's just it it looks a, like a lot of fun. So I think we showed the trailer a couple of weeks back. And if you wanted to check out the trailer, it's on our YouTube channel right now. Um, also out now, didn't come out this week, but it is out now, is Absolute Carnage, and it just so happens that we have a trailer for it. A little, well, I'll say it's more like a, the critics reacting to it. I've heard nothing but good things about this book, cool. and which is yeah. actually really nice, because I'm not a huge Venom Carnage fan, but their proximity to Spider-Man makes me want to read some of their stuff every sure. now and then. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, check this out. This is the, uh, uh, what critics are saying about Absolute Carnage from Marvel, available now. <laughs> That's what the critics are saying about Absolute Carnage in comic shops right now. It's Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. So, yeah, I mean, kind of a seal of approval right there. And Absolutely. like, I mean, in addition to the critics' responses, you already know that's a great team up. So definitely check that out. It's in comic shops, and I think it's gonna be going for a couple of weeks now. So, or be going for a couple of weeks because it's an event. Yeah. Um, so on that note, it's time for news. Yes. Uh, Thea is here. Hello, surprise. And she's gonna talk about some of the things that happened in the world of comics in the last seven days. Let's get it. <laughs> Boom 
Boom Studios announced that Once and Future No. 1, the extra-sized issue, kicking off an all-new series from New York Times best-selling writer Kieran Gillen, Russ Manning Award-winning artist Dan Mora, and acclaimed colorist Tamara Bonvillain, has sold out at the distributor level before its on-sale date of today. In order to meet the overwhelming demand from retailers and fans, Boom Studios is fast-tracking the release of Once and Future No. 1's second printing variant, featuring an all-new cover by series artist Dan Mora. So it can arrive in comic shops on August 28th. Cool. So, like, this is such a big deal. It is, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah it sold out before his stores. I'm going to apologize to you now because I should have grabbed one for you <laughs> before. Yeah, rude. <laughs> So now you're going to get Where are the goods? Right, yeah. You're going <laughs> to get the second printing. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so mad. No, I really just really want to read the story. Right, that's <laughs> the story's what matters. I'm not like a cover collector, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool that this has been such a big deal and like yeah. everybody's excited about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they anticipated it being a hit and like it's turning out to be so awesome. Bueno. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, the Pretty Deadly series by Kelly Sue DeConnick and Emma Rios returns this September. This new installment in the popular mythic fantasy series is titled The Rat and will be set during the classic Hollywood golden era. This new story arc will be the midway point in the Pretty Deadly series, with the following volumes 4 and 5's themes already planned out. Pretty Deadly The Rat No. 1 will be available on Wednesday, September 4th, and if you're looking to catch up on the series before the new story arc starts, Pretty Deadly Vol. 1 The Shrike and Pretty Deadly Vol. 2 The Bear are available now in comic shops. There's also a trailer available for this, so if you want to check that out, head on over to Previews World, and you can check out the uh, news section, and you can yeah, yeah, latest news. see the trailer. Yeah, 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 it's right there. And yeah, like yeah, shout out to Telly Kelly Sue DeConnick uh, mm -hmm. behind Captain Marvel. So yeah, <laughs> whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> this also seems like a cool series. I haven't read any of it, but mm -hmm. now I really want to. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize <laughs> they had moved so far along with mm -hmm. it. Like I knew there was a mini series. I didn't realize there was multiple ones. So, yeah, yeah, cool. Whoop. <laughs> Last but not least, in November, the bad guys win. The year of the villain reaches its next deadly phase with hostile takeover, as the heroes of the DC Universe are defeated by their greatest foes. The triumph of evil over good will be represented with a series of two-layer acetate covers in November, which will see DC's heroes literally replaced by their villains. Action Comics is taken over by Lex Luthor and the Justice League by the Legion of Doom, for example. The top layer of the cover features the villain's hostile takeover of the book's title, showing off their newly empowered status quo. The second layer, retaining each series' familiar logo, will reflect the storyline events that led to the hero's defeat. All of November's Year of the Villain Ace Tate covers are featured in the August issue of previews. No, so you, you say you say acetate? Yeah. I say acetate. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. It's acetate. Okay. I looked it up to make sure because I wasn't sure. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I've been saying it the wrong. The internet forever. says acetate. Those are cool covers, though. I like the like you know the, du the double layer uh -huh, like, pull yeah, back and get a different kind of type of cover mm -hmm. thing. Um, also, I just wanted to point this out. Like it's not news, but I also think it's it's something that people should know about. Noteworthy. Um, uh, over the past week, uh, we announced uh, that midnight releases mm -hmm. at your local comic shop will now include anything and everything. It's really cool. So uh, like so, what is this exactly? Basically. Uh, uh, certain certain milestone books come out, and then that company like DC will have like a Action Comics 1000 midnight release party. Yeah. And like uh, the deal here is that Diamond's now allowing pretty much anything that has a street date of Wednesday, that Wednesday to go out at midnight. Yeah. So you know, cool. it's a fun option. Yeah. Yeah. Like, basically, unless a publisher has said, "Don't put that out." You're gonna get that book. Yeah, basically, right. And it seems like everybody's on board. So, Absolutely. and I think it might even extend to some toys and a couple other things. So, cool. Yeah, just just so you know, you know, like I said, it's not Very news, solid. but at the same no. time, you know, you won't be surprised when you walk yeah. into your midnight release party for. I think the last one was Absolute Carnage. So, yeah. you know, for whatever it is, like coming up down. And the those line. are always cool little events too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super fun. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have midnight releases for a lot of stuff anymore these days. No, you don't. You yeah. know, which is nice. So yeah, it's a good reason to do it. Um, so, uh, 2000 AD. Uh, we uh, had a chance to sit down with Michael Mulcher, who was like the consumer marketing guy at 2000 AD, and he kind of gave us a little chat about like uh, what the company has in store. And just so happens, actually, I have several books here because Ooh. a lot of people, and Michael point this out, but a lot of people consider 2000 AD to be, I'm not giving these away, these are mine. <laughs> A lot of people con collection. consider 2000 AD to be just uh, just dread, but in actuality, they oh, just no, yeah. are a, a hub for science fiction, British yeah. science fiction particularly. Which is um, some of the best. Yeah, right. And uh, as he'll also explain, uh, some of the best writers in comics have mm. come from 2000 AD. For sure. So, yeah, here it is. An interview with Michael Mulcher. He's going to talk about Dread Day and everything you can expect from 2000 AD in the upcoming couple of weeks, actually. So check this out. Hey, 
Hey, Previews World. Troy Jeffrey Allen here at San Diego Comic-Con, hanging out with Michael Moulter of 2000 AD. So the big question is, I know what 2000 AD is about, but I want you to tell our viewers what 2000 AD is about. It's uh, an institution in the UK, but one of the reasons why we're out here at San Diego is because there's such an appetite for our stuff over here, uh, and we'd like to just put out this incredible range of books because it's not just dread. Everyone knows Dread, but we've got so much more to offer. You know, the staples of 2000 AD, things like Rogue Trooper, but also what we now call the Treasury of British Comics, which is all these classic 70s and 80s comics. So you've got girls horror comics, uh, girls sci-fi comics. You've got uh, comics about sentient foxes, First World War, German fighter aces uh, with giant bats. Um, uh, the, the list goes on and on and on. So it, it's is really the kind of the comics world you've never heard of, mm -hmm. but you'll love when you actually read it. No, 100%. So I know that Judge Dredd's Small House is a big one for you. Yeah. And I know you said you have more than Judge Dredd, but <laughs> we're going to talk about Judge Dredd. Okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so what can you tell us about Small House? Like, what is the big deal? Why is this like, this is like the chosen book. Mm. Like, this is the big one that you guys are pushing right now. Yeah. Why is that? So, uh, Judge at the Small House is by Rob Williams and Henry Flint, and it's kind of the combination of about, a, a combination of about a decade's worth of storytelling. You don't necessarily need to have, have, have read that decade to, to, to get it. It's conspiracy, it's action, it's political comment. This is an incredible moment where um, Dredd is, is, is talking to this other guy. I can't do too many spoilers, <laughs> right, but yeah. they're sort of discussing uh, what the judges are about, what Justice Department is, what Mega City One is. And the other character turns to Dredd and says, we're fascists. You know, and it, it's kind of like one of those timely reminders <laughs> that this is political satire. Yeah. You know, the, the, Dredd is such a, an amazing, complex, nuanced character because so often uh, the strip gets you to root for the bad guy and the really bad guy as well. Uh, somebody who doesn't hide it, isn't hiding behind some justification. He's just, you know, I'm the law regardless of whether it's just or not. Yeah. So. It, it's one of those collections which is just so packed with stuff. And it's really the best, the, the best comics that we can bring to you, yeah, you know? I love it, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's so dense, um, there's so much going on. Henry Flint's artwork is just, I mean, why on earth he's not been snapped up? Like, Marvel and DC do not snap up Henry <laughs> Flint. Um, but he, he's, he's an absolute master. Rob Williams, you know, he had a huge, great big run on Suicide Squad mm -hmm. for DC. He's one of our best writers, and really, uh, he, he's one of the writers that you can see taking over the legacy of John Wagner, the co-creator of Judge Dredd, uh, and, and moving the character forward and doing lots of new things in the future. So it, 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 it's a book that, if you're not into Judge Dredd, if you, if you think it's just him hitting people over the head with his, with his day stick, then, you know, read Small House, get your opinion changed immediately. I love that. All right, so what can you tell? I know part of uh, Small House, or part of the, there's an event around Small House, and that's Dread Day. Yeah. So, A, I want to ask you about Dread Day, sure. but also a lot of the, the things I've said said it's a month long celebration, and Dread Day is the culmination of that. Yeah. So, what does that month look like? So, uh, the Day of Dread is uh, really a, it's an opportunity to celebrate Britain's biggest comic book expo. You know, everyone knows Judge Dread, he's entered the lexicon. Really what we wanted to do, it, it, it's, it's part kind of retailer promotion. So we're doing a lot of work with Diamond to, to push the books uh, in the States, the, the Judge Dredd case files, which uh, we print Dread from uh, the beginning in sequential order, still going up to volume 33, 32, 33 yeah. in the UK. With the day of Dread on the 7th of September, it's just an opportunity, I think, to, to acknowledge, number one, what the character uh, has brought to comics, Number two, the, the talent that the, the Dread Strip has, has, yeah. has, has uh, brought to comics. Um, and we wanted it to be an opportunity for fans to express their love of the character, for retailers to get on board, uh, and for those people you know, who, who don't know the character and just assume he's one note, you know, he's just, he's just a punisher in a uniform. That's not the case at all. Mm -hmm. um, to get their teeth into something good, something long running, something that is a really rewarding read. So on the day itself, we're gonna have lots of signings, uh, hopefully some of the states as well. Uh, there's gonna be lots of promotion online, lots of giveaways, things like that. Um, so that those who don't know Dread can get to 
know him and love him as much as we do. For <laughs> those who do know Dread can uh, yeah, really shout about their love of the character. And thanks to the people of 2000 AD for setting up the interview with us. I also want to say it's called Day of Dread, mm -hmm. and it is September 7th at your local comic book shop. So definitely, first of all, let your local comic shop know that you want to participate in Day of Dread. Yeah. Because it's still not too late. And on top of that, go to your local comic shop on September 7th because, like, yeah, it's a cool little uh, cool little event they're doing. And Absolutely. Yeah, another one of those situations where, like, I don't know if it's a midnight release, but they're dropping the Small House book that week, too, which has actually Ooh. been one of their biggest hits in the last couple of years. Very so cool. also worth checking out. Yeah. Um, but now it's time for Previews Toy Chest. True. Uh, Natasha's here, and she's going to show you what's inside the Previews Toy Chest, and we're going to show you a little trailer on top of that. And then when we come back, we'll talk some more. Sorry. <laughs> Check it out. Hey Previews World, here's this week's rundown of some of the toys, statues, and collectibles hitting store shelves for the first time. Let's take a look inside the Previews Toy Chest for the week of August 14th, 2019. Want to see more? Be sure to check out Talking Toys, our weekly show that spotlights new collectibles on their way to your friendly local comic shop. Just head over to previewsworld.com slash talking toys to find out more. Hey, this is Jim Lee, and you're about to enter into my world of Batman Hush. And that was a trailer for Batman Hush, and I know some people are probably like, why did you just show a trailer for something that came out over a decade ago? Right. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people also know this. The animated movie just dropped, yeah. and so DC did a new printing of it. And so, like, yeah, it's just re-familiarizing people with this story that, like, a lot of people love. Some of us think it's okay. <laughs> but at the same time, it's got great artwork, and it's like a, a dynamic team of Jeff Love and Jim Lee. So, cool. yeah, if you've missed out on it, or if you just, like, had a copy of it and you don't have it anymore, you saw the animated movie, and you want to, like, you know, discover the, the, the full story itself, because mm -hmm. I'm sure it's an abbreviated version in the yeah. cartoon, uh, check it out. It's at your local comic shop now. Yeah. Uh, so on that note, it's Social Swamp Time. It's true. It's true. We asked you guys what you are reading, which is always a good go-to, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some debate about what we should do this past week, mm -hmm. and so we kind of said, I'm like, let's do an easy one. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's just take it easy with the controversy <laughs> this week. Uh, so yeah, check it out, Social Swamp. So as usual, we posed you guys a question on social media. This week we wanted to know, you know, some reading suggestions. What comics are you currently reading and why you love them? So we got a bunch of answers. First up, Inik Dom said, Ice Cream Man. I love the flavors this horror comic provides. Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. definitely see what you did there. <laughs> Perfect. Well done. It has made me laugh, cry, and creep me out. It's a delight every time it appears in my pull list. All right, cool. Sandwich Jesus said, Black Hammer. Anything and everything to do with the Hammerverse. Jeff Lemire has a gift for storytelling, and Dean Ormston's artwork has grabbed me and pulled me in deep. Thank you, Sandwich Jesus. <laughs> <sighs> you, know, you can't not say something about you that great name. That also, beautiful. Also, Enik Dom. I'm, I could speculate what that actually is, but I'm not going to, so. Well, yeah. <laughs> We get that, too. We get that, we get too. It. I just didn't want to let that go by. If you can do Sandwich Jesus. Sandwich Jesus. There you go. 
<laughs> what makes him sandwich Jesus? That's does a good he, question. Yeah, like let us know. Does he turn Jesus. water into sandwiches? We want to know. Actually, I think I just is this sold your it. miraculous power. There you go. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let us know, sandwich Jesus. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Omnibusters said Sarah by Garth Ennis. Sometimes six issues is all it takes to tell an interesting, satisfying story with a fully realized character with depth. Garth Ennis nailed it with Sarah. Nice. That's one that I definitely want to get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually been a third eye and actually almost picked it up mm -hmm. and didn't have a chance to like really mm -hmm. lock it in. Make but that next on the list. That's next on the list, yeah. Cool. Anything Garth Ennis, it's I'm true. down. That's true. Danny Ollie 2 said, Powers of Ten and House of X are pretty awesome. I'm also reading Batman Last Night on Earth, Killers from Valiant Comics, among others. There you go. And last but not least, Jeff Batista said, She Said Destroy is my jam. Nice, nice, nice. I love that artwork. That's cool. That's great, yeah. And like, uh, no, we got a, uh, I'm fairly certain, uh, Vault Comics, I think, are the people that make uh, She Said Destroy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, someone put the word out that we were doing this, because like, it was just a laundry list of people saying She Said Destroy is their favorite book. And oh, I was interesting. Like, oh, fine. <laughs> fine. Not saying it's not true. Yeah. I'm just like, you know, I just was like, okay, we got to put them on the show. Yeah. They're putting in the effort. Now I want to check it out. Yeah, right, right. Y'all are really that gung ho about it. I mean, actually, it might be kind of your vibe, because like, um, it's got like, yes, yeah, like supernatural elements, like magic and all this other stuff. I think, if I remember correctly, it's about a uh, uh, some sort of a witch who, like, you know, gets ousted and comes back with like revenge on her mind that might be not what the story is but also totally not my jam if it is right there you go <laughs> but i think that's along that's along those lines and i've heard cool. good things about it so nice. yeah interesting book interesting book up. but yeah it's good to hear what you guys have to say we always want to know what you guys are reading so whether or not we're asking you let us know yeah and we'll we'll always come back to this question because we think it is important that everybody shares what they're reading like everybody you know give each other reading suggestions absolutely talk about comics like spread I, the word absolutely um, also, I neglected to mention at the top of the show, and I should have, that uh, we are doing a prize this week, yes. and it's the 112 Collective Logan figure. Uh -huh. So, uh, do we have it in the studio? We do. Yeah. It is here in a box, there and you it's go. fancy. It is. And yeah, we can, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull him out. There you go. Ooh. I mean, he's in a, oh, uh -oh. this part of the box there. There we go. Ah! <laughs> He probably had to push from the he's bottom. He's shy today. <laughs> there you go. There we go. I mean, he's in plastic, so he's you in can't plastic, really see yeah. him very much. But there you go. But there he is. Right, all that effort, and you still can't see him too well, but that's okay. He's, he's <laughs> close enough. He's there. He's there in his fancy box. Yeah, but he, high quality, he, and he, also, he, yeah, he's got like the the cloth, the the clothing on him is actual fabric. So ooh, yeah, one yeah, of yeah. those fancy ones. Super fancy. I do like those. There you go. Personally. All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So how can people win? If you guys want to win this guy, let us know who should play Wolverine in the MCU. Who's the next actor you think should pick up this role? Comment and let us know. We'll take entries until next Wednesday and pick a random winner from everyone who commented. Cool, cool. Yeah, and like I said, these are really high quality. Yes. But I gotta, I, I kind of know what your answer is going to be, but who do you think should play Wolverine? Why would you know what my answer is when I have no idea? Because you have no idea. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Got me! <laughs> I don't so. speculate on that stuff. No, I'm bad sure. at it. I mean, no, I, I, I totally get that. I couldn't tell you, you should play Wolverine at all. Like, I hope Thank they do you. something drastically different, though. Like, that would be cool, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down or for whatever. Something more like Probably. the comics, because Hugh Jackman was a little tall. He was a great Wolverine, but he's a little tall for Wolverine. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, um, but we're almost done here. It's true. Uh, we did do our prize this week, but who was last week's winner? Yes, so our winner of last week's prize of the two Batman pop figures mm -hmm. is Joe Sales, who responded by saying that he first learned of Batman through the original TV series with Adam West. Mm -hmm. It was on reruns at the time, but still counts. Yeah, no, still for counts. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. No. So you get those cool Batmans. All right, definitely my, one of my earliest memories of Batman, mm -hmm. so why the heck not? And uh, outside of that, it's comic shop shout-out time. Uh-huh. As always, if you guys want to be featured on the show with your favorite local comic shop, let us know what they are. Use the hashtag SupportYourLCS and you could be featured. This week, we're going to leave you with photos of nostalgic comics in San Gabriel, California. Nice, nice. And that's it this week for Previews World Weekly. I am one of your hosts, Troy Jeffrey Allen. And I'm Thea, and we'll see you at the Spinner Rack. <laughs>